banking sector has registered an increase in non-performing loans in the first half of 2020, attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic, according to Saiton Investments' first half of 2020 banking sector report. The report themed depressed earnings and deteriorating asset quality amid the COVID-19 pandemic operating environment shows that asset quality for listed banks deteriorated in the first half of the year. The report further shows that the gross non-performing loan ratio rose by 1.6 percentage points to 11.6 percent from 10 percent in the first half of 2019. Now joining me in studio to explain further the banking sector performance is Rodney Omuhulu, investment analyst at Saiton. Rodney, thank you for making time. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Okay, we start on uh, the asset quality that has been deteriorating in the first half of 2020, and that is non-performing loans. As I'd mentioned earlier, we've seen it rise to 11.6%, up from 10% uh, in 2019. And this is uh, pr approximately on a five-year uh, high because the average has been mm -hmm. about 8.5%. Why are we seeing uh, a deterioration in this asset class? Uh, so maybe just to um, paint a better picture of uh, what we mean by deteriorating asset quality. Um, when we say assets for banks, assets are the loans they give us to various clients. They might be households or businesses in this case. Mm -hmm. So um, having considered the effects that we've seen uh, from the virus where businesses have been forced to operate within lockdown conditions, where you have... Uh, Cafes, or you aren't operating, you aren't allowed to operate in certain places. You, you've seen um, industry being affected by this, where you have restaurants and hotels closing down, and all of these businesses are clients to banks. So when we say deteriorating asset quality, it means all been affected by the virus aren't able to keep up with their loan payments to the various banks that are in the market. Mm -hmm. Why so? How has COVID-19 affected the repayment of these loans? So, uh, when you look at a business, as I uh, mentioned earlier, for hotels, for example, a hotel can maybe take a loan for expansion. And uh, Corona comes, you have lockdown restrictions. The clients you're expecting overseas aren't able to come. That means, say, for the next four months, your earnings won't be the same as what you expect. Mm -hmm. If you have standing loan arrangements with these banks, you aren't able to meet uh, your needs. Uh, consequently, we've seen a uh, level of proactivity in terms of uh, the CBK and banks, where they, they increase provisions. So when they have loans, they normally provisionings to account for the loans that will go non-performing in this case. Okay, great. So we've seen the banks and the CBK going to sort of mitigate the situation we have currently. Mm -hmm. Good explanation there. Now, the Central Bank of Kenya allowed for an extension and restructuring of loans. And according to the mm -hmm. Monetary Policy Committee, approximately 844 billion shillings, representing 21.9% of the total 2.9 trillion shillings banking sector loan book, has been restructured as at June 2020. What kind of impact does, does this sort of restructuring have on the borrowers, for example, the hotel, tours and travel industry that have seen a stagnation mm. during the COVID-19 period? So ultimately, for some of these businesses, uh, what the restructuring means is that for certain standing loans that they have, they are allowed to, re to renegotiate the terms where you get uh, loan extensions. But with these loan extensions, ultimately comes additional costs. And the position that the CBK took was some of these costs will be incurred by the actual banks. So this move is sort of just to try and cushion all these businesses that are being affected by the whole virus and try to make it uh, a bit more bearable and uh, allow them to withstand this whole period until the country is able to recover. Mm -hmm. When you say cushion, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, I'd say ultimately making it easier for them in the case of where you default on a loan, uh, the bank is more willing to hear you out, renegotiate your terms, as opposed to uh, forcing auctioneers to come and, let's say, pick uh, property from your business, uh, forcing you to close down. Mm -hmm. So such a situation allows you to sort of um, wait out a situation where you can still operate despite having outstanding loans for a certain period of time while uh, before you actually recover from 
the harsh environment that we're going through. Mm -hmm. Now, with the large amounts of restructuring and reclassification of loans witnessed in the first half of 2020, the report says it, uh, it expects banks' core source of revenue, which is interest income, mm -hmm. to be negatively affected. How so? So, um, normally banks benefit from the loan repayments and interest repayments that come from the various clients. And when you're forced to structure close to 29% of your loan book, that means 29%, close to 29% of your revenues will be postponed ultimately. That's where we see the, the effects in terms of income generation. Mm -hmm. So, the move by some of these banks is ultimately to uh, diversify uh, sources of revenue such that they don't rely too much on the net and interest income. Mm -hmm. What kind of diversification have we seen this far? Uh, so far, some banks have opted to look for various avenues uh, in terms of just pushing the businesses. Some have uh, ramped up their digital platforms to sort of just broaden their scope in terms of uh, reaching out to more clients. And ultimately, this has, can be seen in terms of uh, top line growth, where you're seeing net loans and uh, deposits have increased during the period, despite the depressed earnings that were, are being experienced. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of diversification of their asset classes, we are also seeing banks trying to stay afloat. And one way that banks are doing this is suspending the payment of cash dividends to some of their shareholders. We saw equity do this when they were due for payment to their shareholders. What's the rationale behind this move? So I'd say with regards to that uh, sort of uh, preservation, it, uh, it's mostly informed by the uncertainty that we have in the environment where COVID is still here, but we're not sure what might happen next year. So uh, experiencing the current environment right now and expectations for a, a year to come, two years to come, your thoughts would be uh, let's save some money now in case this thing stretches for the next two, three years. You have some source of uh, capital that can allow you to stay afloat while it's you see how to mitigate the various factors in the environment. Mm -hmm. Now, as we almost come to a close, the report also ranked listed banks in the country. INDM was first followed by COP Bank and KCB. How did uh, the report reach to this conclusion? So, um, mostly based on uh, the metrics in terms of their performance and uh, considering the various uh, business models that these different banks have, um, INDM stands out in terms of just retaining their asset quality and uh, having considered the factors of the effects of the virus, sorry, uh, and m seems to be uh, uh, taking it better than most banks. So based on our ranking, it's just how uh, these banks have been affected by the current situation in the economy. Mm -hmm. Finally, um, the first half of the year looks like it has been depressing for certain asset mm -hmm. classes. Sure. Judging from that result, what would you say is the predicted result for the second half of the year? Um, so, uh, as I highlighted earlier, there's been a sense of proactivity in terms of uh, how the banking sector has been operating considering the virus. So, going forward, we expect them to stay afloat or be a bit more resilient considering the measures already put in place by both these banks and the CBK. So going forward, we expect the situation to improve unless the situation turns otherwise with the virus. Mm -hmm. Rodney Omukulu, Investment Analyst at Saiton, thank you for making time. Thank you so much.